because they said this is not going away tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. it's it's here to it's here to shift us. That this is the beginning of the biggest awake. In fact, I have this quote and it's in the book. I just love this. We are in the beginning stages of the biggest collective awakening ever seen in the history of mankind. Yes. That's so huge. And and so they are here to help us do that. And and it may seem I love how you have such a positive message. That's 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 your thing and that's so important because so many of us are here to help shift things into a more love-based environment a more love-based awakened compassionate collective and we may be you know I have a five-year-old grandson and they they tell my guides tell me that a lot of the changes that I want to see he'll see in his lifetime yeah but at 66 I'm not going to see the, all the changes that I want to see. Well, you'll see them. You just won't be seeing them from your body. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Very clearly. I will be applauding and just like, way to go. But, and but you, yeah. you will be guiding your grandson too. I just, just uh, in. There's be no doubt people. about that. There's yeah. No about so that. you might be a generation or two ahead planting the seeds that we're not yeah. going to see the harvest to, but that's, so it may feel, and I, I know that I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening to this or watching this, they may feel like they don't fit in. And that you're really, you're like the black sheep of the family or nobody understands you or you really just don't fit in. That's because you're here to make changes. So the more you, you got to accentuate the positive. Wow, I feel good. A little bit of feel good goes a long way. You're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just fad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? Hello and welcome to another show, Accentuating the Positive with Karen Swain. So wonderful to be with you again. I have Robbie Holtz back on the show. Robbie and I had a great conversation. How many years ago, Robbie? Oh, we were younger. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Only by a couple of years. <laughs> It seems to count even more now than I'm in my <laughs> mid 60s. <laughs> Every day counts. Every yes. day counts. <laughs> so a couple of years ago, and you also came into our inner sanctum as a guest teacher. That's right, wasn't it? A couple of yeah, years ago. Yeah, I think ago. so. Yeah. And met I met our little tribe back then, and let me read you all about Robbie. We had a great conversation. We'll, we'll talk about it but we're going to have a different conversation this time. Let me just read your bio. And remember, if you're liking the shows and the conversations, remember to subscribe and share the shows with your friends and leave us a comment, send us an email, all that good stuff and support the show. Uh, when you click and leave a comment, that actually the algorithms in YouTube or uh, iTunes, when you leave a comment or any of the platforms, uh, when you make some sort of... Um, uh, action it actually helps the shows get out there okay so Robbie Holtz is an international respected healer and medium frequent media guest and author of the award-winning book series in 43 countries her first book called secrets of aboriginal healing and aboriginal secrets of awakening the Aboriginal healing secrets were revealed to Gary Holtz, which was is was your husband. How many years ago was it that he came out to Australia? Oh, well, he came out in 94. So way back then when he yeah. traveled to, uh, at the request of a remote Aboriginal tribe, when he made a trip down under to meet them. At the time he was in a wheelchair, wasn't he? He was yeah. a quadriplegic. Yes. Yeah, no feeling from the neck down. Yeah. Amazing. And doesn't the story go that he met an Australian naturopath in a bar or something and he was having a conversation? You have an amazing memory. Yes. Yes. Here in the States. Right. He had just been given a, a diagnosis that he had about, he really had about six months to live. Right. He had MS and uh, the doctors knew he wasn't going to, his organs were starting to shut down. And Gary was this very tenacious scientist. He was determined to find a way to survive because he had children and happened to meet that evening in a jazz bar, a naturopath from Australia who told him about the healing abilities of the remote Aboriginal tribe or nation. 
I know. There's just no coincidences there. So, you know, he gets yeah. himself on a plane. She gave him, um, I think she gave him someone to connect with. He gets himself out here in a wheelchair and out to remote uh, Australia to meet this tribe. And he spends, what, about eight weeks out there or a few weeks? No, it wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. It was really only about maybe 10 days. It's oh, remarkable okay. what happened in 10 days time. Remarkable. Because he was literally unloaded as cargo from that airplane and came back 10 days later where he had feeling in his body for the first time in seven years. And he was able to clumsily walk on the airplane on the way back. But the biggest transformation was really the emotional one. And he realized that as a scientist, there's a lot of gray that you can't explain, but it still exists nonetheless. Yeah. And, and the aboriginals, I want this to be clear, the aboriginal uh, tribe that he was with asked him to take their healing secrets out. It, 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 we're not stealing anything. It was at their request that we brought this information out because, and rightfully so, we don't really, Western civilization, especially here in the States, we don't really understand how healing works. And we were always, mm -hmm. we tend to just treat the body. And the Aboriginal people told us how it's the emotions and the soul are also involved. So it's those three together, the body, the emotions, and the soul. You know, what amazed me about the information, because in the last conversation you shared some of the secrets was that I, I started doing healing courses in my 30s and um, it was the same information and I'm like who knew the Aboriginal people knew this so any energy healer or download that's downloading conversations from you know spirit guides the angelic realm the ascended masters so the indigenous have it seems that the indigenous throughout the world not just the Aboriginal have have had these these well they're not secrets but these abilities this information this knowledge uh -huh. knowledge uh -huh. better word and um so yeah it was amazing so using the the aboriginal healing techniques you've healed yourself of hep c fibromyalgia chronic fatigue syndrome and treatment including temporary brain damage you had some temporary brain damage and oh yeah they did it yeah well i mean i i go big right um so <laughs> <laughs> you don't do anything small. That's right. If you're going to die almost, let's do this twice, right? So, I, I mean, I had a blood transfusion when I delivered my son back in 85, and that was tainted with hepatitis C. So the hepatitis C almost killed me, and then they put me on experimental treatments to, just to keep me alive, really. And then the experimental treatments caused some real damage. So at that point, I still had the fibromyalgia, which was raging in my body, and now I had fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and treatment induced brain damage. So at that point I was ushered out the back door. They didn't really have anything for me. And I just wanted to survive I, long enough for my young son to remember me. I, I just, I didn't think I could survive very long, but I wanted to survive at least a couple more years so that I could teach him things and that he would remember me at least a little bit. And that's when I started realizing that there's a lot of answers out there besides Western medicine, that there's a lot of alternative. And it was, and you know, like you talked about uh, energy, it was energy healing that really kind of got me back on the right path. I had a naturopathic doctor who was doing things. I didn't know what she was doing, but I know that I was feeling better. And so she was giving me uh, natural herbs and supplements and, and, but doing energy work on me and, and brought me back. And then, come to realize it's, it's what the aboriginal tribes people are telling us um it's you know you've got to change your emotional state because our bodies are so affected by our emotions and especially now um it, they're just crumbling under the weight of a lot of heavy emotional stuff so i had to, I had to pay attention oh, yeah. to that and realize what i was doing oh, yeah yeah absolutely uh, yeah i personally think that western allopathic medicine has not got a clue really uh, they, they know how to put the body back together again, you know, when you break it up. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, if you need the heart surgery, yeah. yeah. I, and I'm not negating it. I'm just saying that it's an incomplete picture for, for a lot of things. And they're not connecting the dots between the emotions and the body and how it, it affects the body. Yeah. It's designed that way. And, and some of the hardest emotions, the most toxic emotions for the body to handle are shame and guilt and um, you know self-hatred and it creates a different chemical response a different cell and it blocks energy 
Yeah. And Dr. Emoto showed us what those cells look like. They're very disfigured. And then the flip side is love-based emotions create this, it's like this swampy breeding ground for disease with the fear mm -hmm. or this thriving, teeming, vibrant river with this energetic flow with mm -hmm. love-based emotions. So the best emotions to heal with are gratitude, forgiveness of self and others, and of anything love-based. But, but yes, Joy. You, Joy. You know, yeah. Robbie, I had a brilliant teacher when I was a young girl, but there was no coincidence I've cho I chose her before I came, right? And that was mum, who was pretty miserable in the last years of the, her uh, marriage to my dad. And then so he leaves her for a younger, prettier model, like literally a model, a 24-year-old model. And then she hates herself to death. It took her five mm. years. It took five years of wow. resentment and hatred and feeling, because she was in her mid-40s when he left, and feeling wow. old and fat and not worthy. All her um, self-worth came through her body, her, her attachment to her, how her body looked and her age. And as she got older, she hated herself more. It took five years to take her out. Yeah. Just yeah. those are my... So I witnessed that. So she was my best teacher, you know, like... Mm -hmm to witness mm -hmm. how that self-hatred and resentment and holding on to anger just just eats you away. And that's exactly what happened to her. That doctors yeah. opened her up and she was riddled with cancer and they just closed her up and they just said, get your stuff in order. Anyway, yeah. let's, get, let's get on. So your latest book, you've got a new book, Vibrant Living, Braving the Pandemic with Help from Your Guardian Angel. And it's filled with clear directives on how to engage the angels and benevolent spirit guides for help with any of today's challenges, not just the pandemic, because we've got more challenges to come, right? Yeah. I, I wanted to make sure that people realized that there is tremendous help available to them. And it, it doesn't have to be pandemic related, but that's certainly available in the book as well. So I've been doing consultations for a long time, and I can see where people are getting stuck, where they're getting hung up where their minds are sabotaging them and they're not recognizing that there is tremendous help on the other side of the veil. And it's there for us, but we need to ask for it because it's a free will planet. They will not just step in and intervene. And the guardian angel is the easiest to communicate to, uh, even more so than deceased loved ones or spirit guides. The guardian angels are like the first responders. They are the, they're designed to be the easiest to, to work with. And, and, it's it, they've told me because now I'm a medium and I can communicate to them and they've made it very clear to me because um, we put it in the book and my my I have a, a co-writer in New York City and she kept sending it back with the changes I would because they were telling me it's like working a, a five amps of power on your own versus 5,000 amps of power with their help and my co-writer thought that can't be right so she kept changing it to 500 and they're like Oh no, it's 5,000 amps of power. It's that much power is available to you when you allow us to assist you. So it's, it's tremendous, but because it's a free will planet and there's nothing wrong with pain and struggle, that's part of the growth process, but there's so much help available to you. And it's about recognizing how to get that mind to support you and be the powerful tool that it's designed to be because it's a tool but it's not supposed to be in charge doing a lot of what we're asking it to do. Yeah. Now I'm just going to get through this by our website, holdswellness.com for people <laughs> listening. On. Okay. So, you know, in the last conversation we had, you told me about, um, you know, after Gary came back, because obviously, well, not obviously for people who haven't watched it, but Gary has passed and, and you still communicate. You've still got a relationship from beyond, you know, the veil is the vernacular that we use. Uh, and um, so obviously you've been very mediumistic or psychic for a while. Did that happen during your time, you know, working with Gary or were you like that before you met him? No. When did the, when did the connection to the spirits and the angels kick in? <laughs> well, I, I love to answer this question because it's really good. It just shows that there's hope for everybody, you know? <laughs> um, so when I, and Gary lived 12 years beyond what the doctors expected after his trip into the outback. And he okay. came back like a man on fire wanting to spread this information because it was so immensely helpful and became a, a, a 
he was a physicist when he went into the desert, but he became a psychoneuroimmunologist using the body to stimulate the immune system. So we would work with uh, patients and I would watch him communicate to the guides and angels all the time. This is what he discovered in the outback because this is what the tribe was doing, right? So he started communicating. So I would just come to him with my questions. I didn't have any clue how to connect and he's so good at it. I just ask him all the time, right? So he would tell me what the guides were saying and he's the one who turned me on to the fact that everybody's got a guardian angel. They're right there with you 24 seven. And, and so then when he passed in 2007, he started showing up every morning at eight o'clock, 8.00, not 8.01 and not 7.59 because he was a very punctual man, married to a woman who was not. And so he would show up at eight o'clock and he would show up as this very distinct pattern of energy. It kind of looked like an eyeball. And um, that's when I started connecting to him on the other side of the veil and he would become telepathic to me. He would just put thoughts into my head and I would, converse with him and I that's when the mediumship started to wake up in me is that's when I realized oh I can communicate to the other side and it just kept growing and growing and growing to the point where that's what I do now is communicate to the other side for people I'm just the, I'm, I'm the bridge so I didn't speak. realize that it kicked in after he passed I thought that you were already doing that before he passed I I was lazy why would I do it when he's right here and he when has he, all the yeah. answers but I didn't even know I had that ability I did not know that he brought that out in me and of course now he still works with me he's part of my healing team uh, as are some aboriginal healers who have passed on and then there's others but, but he's still part of the work that i do but he's uh he's relegated to the office let's put it that way oh my god i just had a realization oh sorry i was in the shower this morning it's still morning here and as i was um as I was just, as I was just, you know, like I sort of put my head on the wall sometimes and just let the water run over me. I had this image of being a skinny little Aboriginal boy. And I thought, now that's strange. I've never had that image before. I've had them show up and talk to me, but I've never felt like I'm inside the body of an Aboriginal. In mm. fact, I've never felt that connected to them. Even though I'm Australian, the American Indians, absolutely, like I remember lifetimes with them, but never yeah. the Indigenous Australian, and, and but they have shown up and yacked to me, but I've never had that. And then I, fo I forgot, you know, I, I don't know, I didn't put two and two together in the shower and I just thought, that is so strange. I've never had that vision before. And now it's just the pennies dropping because you're working with the, <laughs> you, uh, you know. I've never heard that before, the pennies dropping. Yeah, <laughs> right, because they work with me all the time. It's, it's, it's interesting how they will show up. If I, have a, if I have a consultation with somebody, right, they show up a couple days before. They don't need to wait until Wednesday at 3, right? They're going to help because they've asked for help and I've agreed to it. So they just, yeah, they're very involved. I feel like I'm the human member of the team. Yeah, the human member of the team. Yeah. And when did the angels kind of say hello say good day <laughs> well gary really became aware that he had this amazing angel named julie that was by his side and he would communicate to her all the time he would spend hours communicating to her and so i, I really started to become aware that they're there and he would describe what was going on with me who was around me and and my sister and you know other people who were there so I just kind of started waking up to that world because it wasn't something that was really on my radar until, uh, like, I'm sure, I don't know about you if you have the same story, but a lot of this stuff sort of had to happen to us to wake us up to energy healing, to angels. It, it wasn't part of a, my upbringing. And, you know, I came from a very conservative, Bible Belt, Catholic upbringing. And angels are a part of that, but not nearly to the extent that they are in my life now. Um, and, and so they really want to help. They are here to help us. But because it's a free will planet, they can't just step in and intervene beyond the guardianship role. Yeah. And the guardianship role is to make sure that you are not harmed or killed or experience something that your soul doesn't want you to go through. Yeah, That's their job. And they're there 24-7, first breath to last breath to ensure that. But beyond that, they have to have our permission before they can step in. But once you do ask them, they step in and they will help you according to two things. They're going to help you according to the highest good of all. 
and very importantly, according to your soul's intentions. So you can say, thank you for helping me win the lottery, but they won't do that if it's not your soul's intention, which it probably isn't, but they'll help bring abundance into your life in other ways. Um, or you can say, thank you for helping me heal this. And you may not realize that there's emotional components that need to be healed first, but they'll help bring that awareness to you. And that's what the book Vibrant Living is about. It's, it's this very compact 60-day guidebook about if you know nothing about this, you can go through this and you can see how they communicate to you, how they can help you, who else is there available to you, how to connect with loved ones who have passed over, how to work with them. And we put all of that information in there because I knew this would make a huge difference in people's lives. It's made a huge difference in my life. Mm -hmm. and many other people who have started excess. And I have to say, my co-writer in New York, she didn't really know about angels, didn't really work with them. Well, of course, I knew they were going to start pulling stuff, you know, once she starts working with them. And she's just a believer now. So hang on, hang on. What, how have you attracted a co-writer and you're writing a book about angels and she doesn't believe in angels? I, I, I'm not putting the pieces together. <laughs> oh, she, well, because we re actually wrote two books. Um, okay. But this is the, this is the uh, and that'll come out next year, but this is sort of the, kind of like the quick little condensed version of it. But she was the one who knew how to, um, I had gone to New York to do a, a television show and I met her and stayed with her for a little bit. And people would come in and do consultations and she'd see them coming out of the, her office where I was staying transformed and she's like what are you doing what are you telling them and I'm like I'm just telling them who's with them you know who's from the other side helping them and how to access it she's like you got to write a book about it so she helped write that book and she knew how to read in stories right so she knew how to create examples of people that I had worked with but of course keep it anonymous but how to weave beautiful stories to make it very relatable so I was giving her the information and she would put it together in story form. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so this was, like, was new to her. Yeah. But then yeah. of course stuff started happening to her and she's like, oh, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. So, so, so tell us some of the stories. What happened to her to like? Oh, she hasn't given me examples, but I just know that she, she'll, t she'll send me a text and say, okay, I had a dinner party last night. I mean, she's in Manhattan, right? The middle of, of New York. And she's like, this is before the pandemic. She would text me and say, I had a dinner party told everybody about your book and what's been happening to me as I'm writing it, everybody wants a copy. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what you told them, Judy, but you know, I'm sure that she's got plenty of examples where they have stepped in and assisted her. I knew they would, because if you're going to write this book, you have to understand and believe it yourself. So I was just curious what they were going to do, but they, she's never told me personally, but I just know that, oh my gosh, over and over and over, they kept doing things to just validate it. Yeah. I know it's so interesting like years ago the concept of angels are just there in the collective right they're just like mm -hmm. you see cards you go to a shop and you see cards with angels on you go to a homeware shop you see angels you know they're just there in the collective and so I just thought about them like that and then I remember hearing a woman called Diane Cooper who's an English woman when I was in my 20s speak at a mind body spirit about the reality of angels and I'm listening to her thinking I'd actually never contemplated that they're actually real entities, real beings that you could talk to. This was, this was way back when. And I, th I came home and I thought, I wonder if the angels are with me. <laughs> and something Diane said is, you know, the angels are always with you and, and you're subconsciously recognizing them by the way you collect like feathers and images of them and people give you little presents with angels on them. So I thought, let me have a look in my house and see if I've got any angel images. I counted around 30 angel images. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd say they're around. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh, had, that's a lot. That's it a was lot. a lot. I yeah. had statues of them. I had candle holders of them. I had cards of them. I had, yeah. I'm like, Isn't okay. that funny? <laughs> I think yeah. I've got some angels with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't, it didn't dawn on me that they were with me. Like I just thought they were pretty. Yeah. You know, like oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's so interesting. And the, and that this is something we also cover in vibrant living is how everybody has at least one guardian angel, whether you believe in it or not. Doesn't even matter how you were raised. They're there, and they're there all the time, walking all by your time. side, and loving you beyond what you're 
you can't even, we can't even fathom as humans how much they love us. They have so much love for us. And they don't have, you know, this range of emotions that we have. When we come to this learning lab, Mother Earth, we're given a body, which is a gift for an etheric spirit, a soul, and we're given a wider range of emotions. Uh, angels don't have impatience. They don't have frustration. They don't have those emotions. That's something that we can experience here on Earth. Um, but they just have tremendous love. And they're okay with pain and struggle for us because they realize that's how you learn, you know. So that's, but they honor our free will. They are governed by certain spiritual laws. I shouldn't say certain. They're governed by spiritual laws and universal laws that restrict them from just stepping in and intervening unless there's a guardianship role going on there. But boy, when you ask, it, it's just, it's transformative. It's just life changing. So let me ask you, after Gary passes, you're connecting with him, you're feeling his energy, and you said that it looked like an eyeball. <laughs> it did. It looks like it looks like an eyeball with the iris and the whole thing. And I, I talk about this in the Awakening book. My my sister would also have him come to her too. She stayed with us the, uh, the last year. Uh, our business was just exploding and I needed help. And so she came and lived with us. We had this big house so there was plenty of room and uh, she would see that as well and I remember after he passed I, it was just some time passed and I said does Gary come to you and she said oh yeah all the time I said what does it look like and she just I took a piece of a napkin and I gave her a pen she drew the exact same thing that I was saying an eyeball so, an eyeball yeah it, it's, it's, it's just I, like an just, eye it's the weirdest thing because when I was again young and trying to sort of sort all this stuff out when I started meditating, I would see this massive eye and I've talked about it in my tribe and, and one of my uh, friends, Kristen, in, in our little group ha had the same thing. Her husband has passed and mm -hmm. she says that when she sits to meditate, she sees this eye that gets bigger and kind of is. And yes. I used to see this eye and the teacher that I had at the time couldn't really explain to me what I was seeing. But later on, I got I got the gist of it. So it's so weird that he comes as this eye and then Kevin Briggs who's someone I've had on the show who's had ET contact with his celestial galactic guides all his life. They showed up when he was eight in the bath, like they physically appeared to him hovering above the ground and worked with him. He's 60 in his 60s now, 66. He says that when he astral travels, he sees the eye and then he goes through the eye and he leaves his body by going out through the eye. Wow. And I've gone, oh, I'll have to try that, Kevin. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I, I, I'd forgotten about this. You brought this to my remembrance. When Gary was alive, and I remember this, we were staying in a hotel, and I'm in the sh he's in the other room resting on the bed, and I'm washing, shampooing my hair in the shower, and I'm seeing this eye because my eyes are closed, and I'm seeing this eye. Okay. And that's when I realized, oh, he's working on me from the other room. And that's the first time I realized, he's been working on me, um, helping me stay healthy and everything else. And that's when I said, was that you? And he said, yeah, that was him. So it would make sense that he would continue with that when he passed over because I knew that was him. And I'd see that a number of times while he was still alive that I could just tell he was working on me from the other room. Wow. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm sort of putting the pieces together. So you seeing the eye, it was almost like you tuning into him looking at you, like looking energetically yeah. at you. So I'm yeah. thinking if we're seeing the eye, like Kristen could, you know, like use that too. When she's seeing the eye, it's her, it's her husband looking at her energetically too from the other side. But um, it could have been my mum, I suppose, looking at me because, as I say, she, she left the planet when I was about 16. Um, I just thought later that it was just the all-seeing, all-knowing eye. It was just the third eye presenting itself as a big eye. Um, but it, no, it, it looked it looked like I was looking in the mirror and, and you know, like yes. you go really up close, it's yes. like you're looking at your own, like an eye. Yes, mm. yes. So what they're, what my guides are telling me now is that okay. you, you were, it, it wasn't the all-seeing eye that you were seeing, it was actually someone on the other side of the veil. There that was how they were appearing to you. Go. Yeah. There you go. So how, so what do your guides say about Kevin, how he goes through the eye? Like, that's a gift he's got. That's I, a gift. I can't, yeah. Well, 
that's uh, not something I have the ability to do. Well, I, well, we could try it. I have, I've, <laughs> I've sort of semi tried it. I'm going to try it now. Yeah, I'm going to try I've it semi, now. I've semi tried it. It's almost like, yeah, yeah, it's a gateway. Okay, it's like yeah. a gateway. Yeah. So it takes him. It takes him to the spirit side. So he said that when he first astral travelled, his guide would take him. And then he did it by himself and he used to go to the spirit side and see all his dead relatives and hang out with them. And he's hilarious. He's this English guy, lives in Florida. And he said that he used to have lots of fun hanging out with these spirits and galactic guides on this other side on the, this, in this realm. And then um, they asked him to stay, like, why don't you stay, stay? And he goes, no, I'm enjoying my physical, he'd say. I'm enjoying <laughs> my physical. I, I think I'm not going to come back now until I actually leave my physical. And so he made a point of saying goodbye to them all. And then he said, I'm going to focus on being physical, which I think is hilarious, right? <laughs> but, but it's a good point because it's a gift to be in this body. And you really need to, because I get a lot, I get people who contact me and they're like, can you help me get into fifth dimension and stay there? Right. And I'm like, well, you're here on a third dimensional planet for a reason. Exactly. And, you know, we do slip into the fourth when we feel this extreme joy and immense gratitude and awesomeness. That's slipping into the fourth. But we're here to learn how to stay in the fourth and then shift into the fifth and stay into the fifth. So as much as it sounds lovely to be, people want to be in that presence, that, that bliss, that's not what this lifetime is about because this planet is designed to help us grow very quickly yeah. because it is so much dark and light, shadow and light, diversity of young souls and old souls, tremendous contrast. So there's huge opportunities for growth left and right. And that's what we're here is to master growth and experience and, and we talk all about that in, in vibrant living about your soul contracts and what are you here to master because yeah. where you get triggered that's giving you pop quizzes right there yeah what you still have to learn my guides are reminding me that um for those people who want to like leave this third dimension and go into the fifth they're just saying <clears throat> you're already in the fifth um, your focus in the third dimension is to be here to teach people about how, yes. to, how to raise their frequency so that yes. we can collectively create a, a, another experience. It's not like for you to get out of here so that you can be pampered and sit on, you know, on a beach yeah. drinking cocktails in the fifth dimension, but I'm just using it as a But yeah. uh, anyway, I'm going to get back to the question I was alluding to. So you, <laughs> you, 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 you can contacted Gary through the eye. How did the angels... How did you connect with them and know that it was them and not spirit in another form, either Gary or Ascended Masters or maybe yeah. or Ascended Masters, but the angelic realm? How did you know that you were speaking to that form of consciousness? Well, that's a great question. And it, it might be the same experience for you where you just have the, the mind tends to negate stuff, right? It's like it's so obvious to you and I, oh, my gosh, how can you not? trust and believe after that experience but it took a number of experiences for me before i'm like there's no explaining that away you know uh, I, I can remember a number of times where my life was saved I, I i had my newborn son my i just brought him home from the hospital and almost walking out into traffic to go collect my mail across the street and something physically pulled me back and one time I was at the top of the stairs and my high heel caught into the carpet and I started to tumble down the stairs and something pulled me back. It's those kind of experiences that at the time I didn't know it was my guardian angel that was there protecting me. And it took some searching and some these experiences. And of course, Gary really opened up that possibility. And it was the Aboriginal tribes that, that opened up that to him as well, that world. And then you just start going down those exciting pathways, right? So that's when I started going down. And, and my sister and I, I have a number of sisters, but one of them lives out here with me, by me. And we would have these great conversations where we knew it, it, we would encourage their sense of humor from the other side of the veil. So we'd be talking about them and all of a sudden a car alarm would go off. You know, it was just, it was just, they were constantly validating for, for us. Uh, one time I asked them to help me with my sugar addiction. Cause I have, was, they, you know, I never enough sugar. Right. And that's unhealthy. So they, one time I'm walking out of a, 
ice cream shop with my, I go to take my first lick, right, of my ice cream cone. It just plops on the parking lot cement and rolls away. And my sister started laughing and she's like, oh, let's go get you another cone. I'm like, I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So they're there assisting and helping. And the more you're, the more you start waking up to it, the more you see that there's signs all over the place. And that's what the book tries to do is, is describe it doesn't try, it does, about how they can help you and how they communicate. Because I think a lot of people have expectations and there's, and they'll, I hear this a lot. Well, they didn't help me when I asked for such and such. Well, again, they're, they're restricted as to what they can do according to, you know, spiritual and university laws. But I think people expect to hear them and see them. Every person is clairsentient where you just feel with your body. So you're, most people are going to feel the guidance with their body and you're going to feel it in your solar plexus some people get tingling on their skin but you're not going to hear them or see them and if you're expecting that to happen then the mind is getting in the way and not allowing them to do their job yeah the angelic realm is a much subtler energy it's it's hard to yeah yes. it's not like a dead person or a spirit guide or um yeah it's a different energy it's a subtler energy and, and you, so subtle so uh, subtle in that when when i say subtle in that the connection from our mind's perspective um you know like i was just thinking of a, an experience i had with the angels as you were talking about all your experiences i was in the car with a friend who was staying with me in the house and um he kind of drove me mad and I was being very critical about him in my head, not, not to his face in person, but I was driving and thinking, oh, will you shut the F up? You drive me crazy. Like I'm having all these thoughts <laughs> yeah. about how this guy's driving me crazy. And I was going up a hill and this van stopped suddenly in front of me. So I slammed on the brakes and my car accelerated up a hill as I'm putting the brakes on, right? And I, in that moment... I had this direct experience of them intervening, not to stop an accident, but to cause an accident. Now, mm -hmm. this sounds crazy, but I got that it was, my, they were directly, because I'm thinking I want to be a deliberate creator. I want to be a deliberate creator. And I'm yes. here, you know, I'm teaching it and I'm learning it and I'm in the car being critical. And so it was a direct experience, like clean up your thoughts, clean up your yes. thoughts. Yes. And I, I felt that it was happening. I've got my foot on the brake and the car's accelerating, I'm thinking, because I know I didn't have my foot on the accelerator. I'm looking at my foot braking like this. The car keeps going. And, I go, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. If we ask them to help us with that, you know, <laughs> They'll bring it to your awareness. <laughs> you know, I, I like to say, can we do this in a fun, easy, gentle, graceful <laughs> way, right? But they will, they'll bring it to you. And that may mean that your computer glitches or you're they're very good at, you know, electronics, that sort of thing, or your phone rings and nobody's there. It's a way to get your attention and, and sort of like, hey, you've asked us to help. Is that really the direction you want to go? Yeah. Because we get caught up in this, unconscious emotional attached habitual pattern it's taking us down dark alleys and we don't want to be going down anymore so they have ways of getting our attention getting our attention exactly and that is not subtle like their energy is subtle but what they can do is so not subtle like you know flip your ice yeah. cream or you know the stuff they can do is just not subtle at all so it's no it's, it's sort of interesting even though try to sort of grasp them or talk to them or find them it's not that easy because it's such a fine energy but what yeah. that can do is so real you know so real. And, and that's that's really what vibrant living is about is how to wake up to the fact that they're there they yeah. love you tremendously they really want to help mm -hmm. but and, and, and how to develop that relationship yeah so that that's all laid out is how to start developing that relationship because when you realize they're there all the time loving you tremendously it changes everything yeah i think if everybody knew that you have someone by your side who loves you beyond comprehension and can help you so much it change you're not alone and you you're designed to have this help so ask away that's what they keep they kept saying to gary and they and they keep saying to me please get people to ask us for more yeah we're here we want to help and the beautiful part is it's not that it's self-serving, but every time you allow them to help you because you are 
allowing them to serve and they're serving at a tremendous love that allows them to grow. So yeah. it's this win-win symbiotic relationship that every yeah. time you allow them to help you, whether it's big, small, vague, specific, it doesn't matter. But every time you invite them to assist you, it uh, enables them to grow as well. And it's hugely transformational for you. You know, Robbie, that's the message that every time I have a conversations about angels that comes through. It's like, you're not asking enough of us. Ask more, ask more. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, I think I had Lorna Byrne. Have you ever heard of Lorna Byrne? Yes, I love her. She's yeah. Amazing. Her and she was saying that there is an army of angels, just like unemployed angels waiting to be Millions. <laughs> I remember that. Millions of unemployed angels waiting to be yeah. And the guides have told me the same thing. Yeah. Because right now, as we're going into these higher frequencies, and you're right, frequencies, dimensions are not some place it's just a frequency it's a vibration and yeah. being into the a higher frequency and vibration they're here to help us we've never had this much help before because yeah. these are auspicious times and so please take advantage of it please avail yourself because they don't have the limitations we do and they see things they see the bigger picture they know how to get you there they know how to help you find the job find the the romantic relationship it's going to take you where your soul intends but when you do that, you're going to love where it takes you because the mind has, and, and, and I, I want this to be clear. It's very easy for them to do this. Very easy for it's child's play. Really? The challenge for them is getting us to go where our mind doesn't want to go because they will never force you to do anything. It's, it's free will. That's fine, but they will not force you to do anything. And we only work with benevolent spirit guides, only work with extremely loving guides. So it's, a, it's you can, they can give you the guidance. I could have gone back and got another ice cream cone um, and it might not have fallen off, but they certainly got their point across. You asked us to help you, right? You know, so, but, but it, it is free will, but it does make a difference. A and, you know, a lot of times we get triggered. We don't want to get triggered, right? So they'll not only give you the insight and the ahas, but they'll also help you so that you're not triggered. I call it upgrade your software. So they, they release this stuff off your cellular, um, this, this, you know, maybe you tend to come, maybe you were deliberately incarnated into a family that has depression and maybe you're here to help heal that. They can help you do that. They can help you get out of it. They can help you have these aha moments. If it's your soul's intention, which it probably is, mm -hmm. they can help you do that. Then they have the green light to go ahead and help you with that. Now, this is true. A lot of people have taken on very dense families in order to transform and heal the lineage, in order to stop the chain of pain. And um, yes, and they feel very swamped inside the drama and the emotion, and they forget that there's like an army of angels there, like. You said you'd take this on and we said we'd be right next to you helping That's you do right. this. Yeah. That's right. You weren't designed to do you you weren't expected to do it alone. Yeah, you weren't expected to do it alone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so what's some of their messages that they've given you about what we're going through at the moment? They've given them and this is why they wanted me to get this book out now, mm -hmm. because they said this is not going away tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. it's it's here to it's here to shift us. Mm -hmm. That this is the beginning of the biggest away. In fact, I have this quote and it's in the book. I just love this. We are in the beginning stages of the biggest collective awakening ever seen in the history of mankind. Yeah. That's so huge. And and so they are here to help us do that. And and it may seem i love how you have such a positive message that's 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 your thing and that's so important because so many of us are here to help shift things into a more love-based environment a more love-based awakened compassionate collective and we may be you know i have a five-year-old grandson and they they tell my guides tell me that a lot of the changes that i want to see he'll see in his lifetime yeah. But at 66, I'm not going to see the, all the changes that I want to well, see. Well, you'll see them. You just won't be seeing them from your body perspective. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Very clearly. I will be applauding and just like, way to go. But, and you, but, yeah. you will be guiding your grandson too. I just, just dropped uh, in. You'll there's be one no doubt that. about that. There's yeah. No doubt about so that. you might be a generation or two ahead planting the seeds that we're not yeah. going to see the harvest to, but that's, so it may feel, and I, I know that I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening to this or watching this, they may feel like they don't fit in and that you're really, 
you're the, like the black sheep of the family or nobody understands you or you really just don't fit in that's because you're here to make changes yeah. so the more you go down this path and you do shift and change and it doesn't that old world doesn't fit you anymore you become more and more in this world but not of it yeah you just have acceptance that and and i i love this quote we put a, this quote in vibrant living as well we're not here to save mother earth mother earth is here to save us Wow. She volunteered to be a learning lab to help us raise our consciousness individually and collectively. So we've all agreed wow. to these things. Say that again. We've got to slow that one down. When okay, because it's so rich. We're not here to save Mother Earth. Mother Earth is here to save us. She agreed to be a learning lab to help us raise our consciousness collectively and individually. So this is a learning lab. Ooh. Yeah, this is what I talk about in Vibrant Living is like, you truth might bomb, be here. Right there, truth bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember that everybody agreed to the different roles and experiences. That's why we have a guardian angel to make sure we're not experiencing something that we didn't sign up for. Yeah. But we have wildlife who agreed to go through oil spills or yep. wildfires and people as well. To yep. This is a learning lab. And you yeah. learn that exponentially. Yeah. And so we have people here in our lives. And the people that we have the most trouble with are our biggest blessing. They're yeah. the greatest teachers. Greatest teachers. They're here to show you. Like mom Where being your a, head? A, a grumpy, you know, angry, you know, person. And then, and then, and then heading out, you know, shifting, leaving her, her body. Because uh, you know, she I, might be here to teach you about acceptance. Yeah, absolutely. She, well, she, she's she, actually back, and I've talked about this before. <laughs> so uh, she told me when she came back when she was born. And that's another story. Um, you know, I just put out a newsletter, and uh, something that I, I, I wrote something that my guide said that came up in a, I can't remember when it came up, but anyway, it came out in the newsletter about this new this new earth, and I, they gave me this analogy which. For me, it was fabulous because I used to be an interior designer and I used to like, I still love renovations of any kind, whether you're renovating a person or a personality or a body or a house or, or someone's You're the style, makeover queen. Yeah. Look, right? It just turns yeah. me on. And so they gave me this analogy and they said, you know, if you're going to renovate a house first, you have to destroy the old house. And yes. they said, this is what's happening with the you know, on earth in order yes. to bring in new systems, old systems have to crumble. Right. And so a lot of the chaos energy that we're seeing is the crumbling of old systems. And what we do as humans and as healers who are here to heal and fix things is we scream at things when they go wrong and say, no, this can't be. But they gave me the analogy as the bulldozers come in and smash down the old house. It's like you're standing there going, no, don't do this. But in order to build the new house, you have to destroy the old. And so there's a lot of destructive chaos energy on the planet at the moment. And we have to let that sort of destroy things so that we can create the, a new a new world as you say a new world if you can take it that your grandson will live in and you can we take won't. it yeah. <laughs> because, this is, because this is so divinely designed it's designed on so many levels to of course it's global of course the u.s is getting hit harder than most we needed to be hit harder than most and it's so, and we needed to have this non-leader in charge so that it would spread rapidly. It's so divinely engineered. And I think that's what we have to remember is it is, it, 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 it's deliberate on so many levels what's happening. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, all so. of it. All of it. And, and more to come. And more to come. And that's mm -hmm. why we're not going to come up with this vaccine tomorrow because then everybody wants to go back to what they were doing before it's like that's the whole point it, it's not it's about not going back to what we were doing before it's about leveling the playing fields because it's going including, to affect everybody <clears throat> including not introducing vaccines we can't vaccinate ourselves against all our problems in life like we have to take re personal responsibility you know the the illness you know if there is when there is a pandemic or some sort of flu season or any 
sort of increase in the probability of getting sick. It's those people that don't take personal responsibility either for their emotions or the health of their body are the first ones that are going to get sick. So it's really pointing us in the direction of taking personal responsibility for our health and well-being, which is something the angels say to me all the time when I ask them to heal me. They go, well, we can do so much. I mean, they can completely heal me, but it's also your responsibility to take care of right. yourself. And right. Like, Have you gotten the message behind that? Have you gotten yeah. the message behind the illness? Because yeah. they'll help you get the message and then yeah. they'll be able to help you heal it as well. It's all part of the process. Yeah. 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 I mean, the whole sort of like, let's vaccinate ourselves against it is just the whole concept is wrong. You know, we can't vaccinate yeah. ourselves against our negative emotions yeah. or against not eating right or against how we're polluting our soils or, you know, poisoning our food we've just got to take responsibility. So the whole concept of the yeah. vac vaccinate yourself against the problems of the world, it just doesn't make sense really. And it, but it's interesting how it may not seem like it, but that they're the ones coming in are very different. So many of them are already awake. I mean, look at what's happened with the protests around the world. So yeah. many of them were very young. They're coming in different. But, you know, we had to pave the way for that as well. And those before us paved the way for us as well. But they're coming in more enlightened at a higher frequency and vibration. And it just it's this beautiful design. So just trust in it and start to recognize, where am I getting hung up? Because it's that resistance that has just given you your homework, you know? Yes. Okay. So what are the, uh, so the question was how the, angels helping us with what's happening what's their message directly to humanity at the moment it's a ask for help ask, ask. that's <laughs> ask the message for help. <laughs> let, let us help you they cannot intervene unless we ask uh, you know it's a free will planet they and we're here to learn through experience and there's nothing wrong with pain. They've made that very clear to me. There's nothing wrong with pain and struggle. That's how we learn. It's part of the growth process. But if you ask, it's like a, it's like a child trying to learn how to tie their shoes and they might make a really tangled mess of it. Part of the process. But when that child asks the parent to help, then the parent steps in and helps them in the way that's appropriate for that child. Same thing here. Yeah. When you ask, they will respond every single time, but they're and in the way that's best for you, according to what your soul wants and the highest good of all. So, but ask, because otherwise it's a free will planet. They have to just sort of wait until you finally decide, uh, I think I need some help here. <laughs> We'd love to help you. We'd love to help you. They would love to help us. Yes, mm -hmm. we're making it way harder than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. We're creating a lot more pain and struggle than it was ever intended. And we were, like I said earlier, designed to have this help. Everybody's available to you. The guardian angel will be the first one to respond to you. And so start waking up to that. It, it's it's going to change everything. Mm. So tell us some other stories, how the angels have helped you. Like, let's talk about healing. How have they helped you heal others? Oh, oh my gosh. Or well, heal yourself. I, yeah, yeah, well, I, I ended up healing myself completely of everything. The fibromyalgia, the hepatitis C, which the doctors just, they said that's not possible. And so the, the testing, uh, they would test me all the time. The university was doing the research and they would test me all the time. They couldn't believe it. So they followed me for a long time. I healed all of that. Um, and so it kind of put me on this path of, oh, you can heal yourself even when they tell you you can't. And that's when I just became passionate about, I have to wake people up to this, right? And that, that now it's kind of gone to the next step about, how to get that mind on board, how to get help from the other side. So I'm just as passionate, like, oh my gosh, this is going to change your life if you start letting them assist you and help you. And so I work with people from around the world. The books are now, again, with their help in 43 countries. I couldn't do that on my own. Mm. And I get people from all over the world who call and do a one-hour consult. That's all I need with people is one hour to help them understand why this physical thing is in their life, how to heal it, what the emotions are behind it. The guide's giving the information, but they're also doing the work. And it's so interesting how I will get, in fact, just minutes before our, our call, uh, we, we chatted, I got a phone call from a woman in Australia who said, you know, I had uh, cancer. No, she had, she had something with, with her um, that was pretty devastating. And she 
knew me through a friend in Australia. And I told her, well, the guides are telling me you're going to be fine. Just be patient. This is about how long they think it might take. And so she was calling me today to say, you were right. I'm fine now. I never would have guessed that. Thank you so much. for." And I'm, I'm just the messenger. And I love it when I get to pass messages like that on. But it's like it was her soul's intention to get better. She was listening. And so they were allowed to help her. And so she just minutes before we, we connected, you and I, she just called to say thank you. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. But let's look at it practically for people that really want to feel the angelic presence helping them. Let's look at how you can block their help and how you can open to their help. So what would you say someone would do if they're sort of like asking for help and they're not allowing that help to come? What, what does that look like? Okay, I love that. That's a great question. What I would do, and this is what I've done over the years, because one of my spirit guides said to me a long time ago, she said, why don't you give that to me, beloved? Why don't you hand that over to me? Let me lean on me. Let me help you with that. Just give it to me. So I started handing things over and allowing her assistance. Big game changer. That's when things started to shift because they were helping me with things that my mind didn't know how to create. And so, you know, people, so I would say hand things over and then follow the intuition. That's their, that's how we're supposed to follow the, the guidance is everybody has an intuition and it's a muscle, you know, you, you develop it, but ask them, thank you for helping me pick up on your guidance. Thank you for helping me understand you more clearly. It, it, getting their message across to you is not a problem. It is so easy for them. But how you can distinguish between the mind versus the guides is the mind is very fear-based and it's a bit controlling. Not a bit. It's more than a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the mind is, it'll tell you, you have to, you should, you need to. Very fear-based. Whereas the guides are guiding you with love. It just feels right. They'll never tell you that you have to do something. It just feels right. And so you follow their guidance with your intuition, that instinct, that sixth sense, that gut instinct. If you want to know whether something is a yes or a no, you know in three seconds whether it's a yes or a no. If it's beyond three seconds, okay, now the mind's involved. Okay. If you have a thought, and we put all this in vibrant living, if you have a thought directly on your mind when you wake up during the night or first thing in the morning, that's from the other side of the veil. It's that second or third thought, okay, guess who else just woke up? You know, the mind. So you start recognizing, it's just like learning a new skill or a new language. It might be a little awkward in the beginning, but you start recognizing their guidance easier. You start, they're telepathic to your thoughts. So you ask simply being telepathic in your thoughts. Thank you for helping me with whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you can ask them for everything else along the way. Thank you for helping me get the mind out of the way so that I'm not negating and I'm validating what you're telling me. And it's interesting watching how they work. And I used to like now you. That's, that's a great quest. That's a great request. Thank you for helping me with my mind, with my worried, crazy thoughts. Thank you for helping me calm them down. Yeah, go on. Like you, yes, you, were yes. Say. you want to focus on what you want. So mm -hmm. rather than saying, thank you for helping me stop being anxious, you want to say, thank you for helping me stay calm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping me find peace, no matter what's going around on mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping me have acceptance, no matter what my loved ones choose to do for mm -hmm. others. And then that allows them permission to download energies into you, to help shift the mind. So what happens is, and this is the cool part, you start noticing that you're changing. Over days, weeks, months, and years, you're shifting and you're changing. Because I used to be this, well, there's a word for it, but I was in the fast lane. You couldn't go fast <laughs> enough, right? And career-minded, but not very spiritually oriented. So that's why I had almost died twice, right? Once wasn't good enough. I got sucked right back in again. So then I just started shifting and changing, and now I'm just in a whole different space. I don't get stressed out. It doesn't matter what's going on around me because I realize there's a purpose to it. It's like, what am I here? To, why is this on my path? What is it here to teach me? That's the question. I'm just thinking of people who find it hard to meditate. 
um, you could say, thank you for helping me quiet my mind and meditate. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Thank you for helping me develop a stronger connection to you. Yes. Thank you for helping me hear you better. Thank you for helping me feel you better. Thank you for helping me create a stronger connection. Because <clears throat> the question was, what blocks for people from having the guidance? And I think that what people do is they cry out for help from a God or from an angelic realm or from their spirit guides or dead relatives or eating, you know, whoever they call out to. And then they just go back into their same old mindset of worry and mm -hmm. stress and fear. Mm -hmm. And of course, what they're asked for is not being answered because they're directly blocking it with their own stressful thoughts. And that, yeah, that would be the answer to that question. What stops them? But a lot of people say, oh, I don't believe in angels or, or prayer because I've asked and it's never happened. But again, we have to, you know, we have to take responsibility for how we think and feel. And, and we talk about that in Vibrant Living too, is about why, because so, people sometimes they've asked in the past and they felt they weren't responded to, about expectations. Mm -hmm. Expectations of the mind about how they're going to respond and when they're going to respond. And you have to let go of those two questions, how and when. When you hand things over, you've got to let go of how is it going to happen and when is it going to happen. You have to trust that if, if, because they won't force anybody to do anything and they will not, they will help you, but they're not going to force anybody else to do, they're not going to force anybody to change and do things because that's their path, right? So if plan A falls through for them, then they just shift to plan B or plan C. So, you know, you don't need to be this kid in the back seat. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, you just hand it over and thank you for helping me be patient. Yeah. Thank you for helping me uh, be open to what you're bringing me. I like to ask, Thank you for helping me let go of what's in my best interest to let go of. And thank you for helping me open to what's in my best interest to open yeah. up to. Here's one, Robbie. Thank you for helping me recognize your help. Yes. That's a good yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And watch what happens. Here's another good one. Be prepared for this one. Thank you for helping me live the highest vision of my soul. Yeah. That, That's when that, I found out I'd be writing books. I'm yeah. like, what? Thank you for helping me own the highest vision of my soul. Because, you know, yes. I had people when I was young telling me, um, telling me things that I just couldn't own. Oh, you're going to be speaking to hundreds of thousands of people. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You're going to be a healer. And as a young girl, I'm like, that's never going to happen. Like it just, I couldn't own that yeah. vision that my soul had for me. So yeah. I needed help in owning that. And that took me years, like 30 years. I'm still owning it. You know, I'm still like still not comfortable yeah. putting myself out there like I see other people do it and I go yeah I should really do that more and I go no nope. <laughs> <laughs> but they can help shift you with that yeah see that's the thing is they start like I said upgrade your software where the mind they shift that stuff yeah and they release it and they download energies of confidence or clarity or trust you know yeah what do you need and they know what we need Thank you for helping me. They know what we need. Thank you for helping me recognize what I need. So, okay, let's shift gears. And what have they, if at all, have they been telling you about what we're moving into as a collective? Have they given you any uh, direction yeah. on what's what's to come? For yes. Humanity? Yes, and and we put about we put that also in vibrant living. It's about we are shifting into a more compassionate, loving. Um, way of thinking and it's happening on a grassroots one by one around the world we may not see it all the time but it's happening around us so it's important and i and i love that you do this especially with when you're talking to people it's important not to put our focus on the people who aren't doing that but on the people who are using these opportunities to grow who are shifting, who are showing compassionate, life-affirming choices. That's really the big thing that right now is making, being more conscious and becoming, making choices that are compassionate, life-affirming. That is going to change things in your life where you start paying attention to your buying dollar, uh, whether you're eating meat, whether you're going home with plastic bags and it may not seem like much, but it does add up and it makes a difference. And you start moving in that direction. Yeah. More collective worldview. So they shook us up to help us see things more clearly oh, and absolutely. to, and to help us become more conscious. That, that's what it, I, I know it's happened in my life where I had to just have 
you know, are you awake now? Are you paying attention now? And started asking those questions in my early 30s when I faced death twice. Is okay, I'm here and I'm here for a reason. Why am I here? And that's what's happening is we're being given an opportunity to pull us out of our routines. And because our mind will just take us down those same old habitual triggered pathways. And it's about waking up to being more conscious in our living. Yeah. Routines. I know routines, right? Gosh, they are. They are. Yeah. Okay. So what about you, Robbie? How's, how's life been for you? Cause I think last time we spoke, you had moved, you'd moved cities, you'd moved houses. Oh, I had, I moved up into the islands, uh, the San Juan islands. Um, I got out of Seattle area and I, you know, I, I love, I, I handed over, where am I going to live to my guides? And I have to say they outdid themselves. They, <laughs> really went over the top because my view of the water and the mountains and the sailboats right out my window, it's all these windows. It's like, oh, you guys, really, this is just so lovely. So did, I, you, did you put in that order when you were living in Seattle? Were you thinking, I, did. I want more nature around me. I want a view. <laughs> <laughs> I want, you know, you put that out there. I did. I handed it over. And my daughter-in-law, who is not aware of any of this, she kept finding me these great places. And, she, and I'm sure she was like, why is she not pursuing these? And my guides are like, well, you can take that if you want it, but we got something better in mind. So I just was very patient. And it took a, a couple months longer than my daughter-in-law thought it should. But they, and then I found this place that I just love. I mean, because the mountains called to me. And I, I live up here where the whales are, cetaceans. Oh, wow. And the dolphins. And so it's not uncommon for us to go for a walk around the island and to see dolphins. Um, and there's whales out here too. So I love being in that energy. So my guides, I just handed it over, you know, even though I loved where I was before, uh, and they made that happen where I moved in right next door to my sister. And there were a hundred people that wanted the place and they're like, you're supposed to have it. So wow. it's kind of like, if it's supposed to happen, they'll help you achieve that. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I remember once I, I needed to move out of a house that I loved. I was getting kicked out of yet another house. And I went to view a house that was just down the road. And what had happened is they'd put the wrong um, price on it. it. They'd put like it was about half. And I thought, oh, I can afford that. And um, a whole lot of people turned up to view it and they, and they shooed us all away. But there was some glitch. There was some mistake that made me get it at that lower price it was just amazing what happened yeah. Yeah. um amazing what happened and i remember thinking wow i mean who could have orchestrated that like that was yes. amazing yeah. yes and that's the thing is you start waking up to the fact that there's these synchronicities yeah these uh, that is no accident yeah it ha I, I, everybody has those stories and that's what i love when i teach an angel class everybody has a story everybody yeah. They may not have recognized at the time what was going on, but everybody's got a story. They're great, those angel stories. I've got plenty of them, especially around, especially around living. So many of them, so many of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, being overseas and, and coming back, we'd, we'd packed everything up. We had nowhere to live. And then a, a couple of weeks before we got back, a friend had said, I want you to rent my house when you get back. And then I said, well, is it empty? She said, no, no, there are tenants in it. And, um, but they're not paying the rent. And so I want to kick them out and put you in. And I said, well, you can't kick them out without giving 60 days of notice. Like that's the law. I'm sorry. You cannot kick these people out. Anyway, what happened was they left. <laughs> they left as soon as I came. Yeah. It's yeah. just like she didn't need to break the law and kick them out. And it was yes. just orchestrated beautifully. It was just yeah. unbelievable how it was orchestrated. Right. Yeah. Just, and you start becoming aware Oh, it wasn't just a synchronicity. There yeah. are no accidents. Things happen for a reason. Yeah. yeah. I have the same thing experienced to me. I have a story similar to what you were just talking about where I wanted to live in this home. And uh, it was a gorgeous home. And I decided I'm going to stay in my place where I am for another year so I can be with my son. And then, but I really loved that place. And this was where I know Gary came in from the other side because I called when it was time for me to move. And I said, is that place available? Now this is a year later. And they said, well, there's somebody in there now, but they're leaving in a couple weeks. So why don't you just 
you know, if you can be ready in another couple of weeks, we'd love to have you. So I got this place. And it's like, how crazy. But I just got this urge to call them. What are the odds of calling a house a year later and it's available this in a couple of weeks? Yeah. So I know Gary was behind that because it was about leaving the home that he and I had shared. And it was, I was a little hesitant to do it, but I'm sure he prompted me. You know, it's time. So has he communicated about his new environment, like where he is? Like, does he get, does he talk to you about these things or does he just sort of like help you heal people? Oh, I have to tell you, I get people, especially in the beginning, uh, I would get texts from people. I would get phone calls from people that would say they'd start out with, this may sound crazy, but there's this guy that's showing up and he keeps dancing around and he wants you to, I don't know who he is, but I just know that I'm supposed to call you and tell you he loves being out of his body. He, he he's, And then somebody else would say, he's showing up. In fact, I saved it. It was on my answer machine. She said, Gary is dancing around and he's in like the disco 70s or 80s clothes. And he just wants you to know, because he loved to dance, but I, you know, he's, he just wants you to know he's dancing around. Or if we go into a place where there's a, somebody who's psychic or medium who's going to communicate to somebody in the audience, it's like, it's going to be me. I, yeah. I just know it's going to be me because Gary still had a way that first year of getting across to me. And it and sure enough. I love that you said he loves being out of his body, but he must have explained that you know, being in a sick, uh, limited, you know, quadriplegic body, there was good reason. Like he, oh. you know, he learned so much from that. He learned, you know, he wouldn't have gone to see the remote Aboriginal tribe had he not no. had those circumstances. And he wouldn't, no. yeah, have healed so many people. Would you say 12 years after he came back and he did all years, this amazing, right. the doctors gave him six months and he lasted. So being in that, yeah that sick restricted body there was a lot of there was a lot of good reasons for it oh it was clearly designed the way his soul wanted him to to go yeah. through that and yeah. and he just wanted me to know and he had a number of people communicating it to me quite often strangers um that he found the it's so freeing to be out of the body yeah i bet uh, yeah so and that he was really happy and at peace so i i mean it, it just but we continued to work together. We worked together when he was here physically and we continue to work together now that he's on the other side. And we were told, he came to me six months before he passed and said, I'm being told that I'm called to the other side, that I can do more from the other side. And we were both upset reasonably, understandably about that. And sure enough, when he passed, he is helping more from the other side than he could possibly do here in the physical form. So he's part of the healing team and he's able to do, in fact, a lot of uh, friends who are healers would call on him and mm -hmm. have him come forward and help them in their healing practice. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's, uh, he's still very involved, very involved. He is, he's a beautiful soul. Oh, Robbie, any last messages from the angels before we say goodbye? <laughs> They want, you know what they're saying? They want people to know how much they're loved. They are, here's the word they're using, adored, adored, adored. cherished, mm. adored and cherished. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, it's always so fun talking to you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. So wonderful to catch up with Robbie Holtz again. She's just delightful. We spent the last half an hour just catching up. Uh, I had some more questions for her about her personal life, but I thought, no, I won't put it on camera. We'll just yak afterwards, which we did. And then we started swapping angel stories, you know, how these miraculous things happened. And I thought, hmm. as, as usual, when you keep talking after the show, there's always great content could have been for the show. But um, yeah, we were just swapping miraculous things that have happened in our lives as the angels have orchestrated it or a law of attraction has orchestrated it or source energy, you know, whatever you want to give that to, but the ability to orchestrate what you want, infinite orchestrating power is the universe. You know, I first started thinking about this when I first started thinking about law of attraction and deliberate creation, when I learned about the body and how the body operates there's something like 300 trillion chemical reactions going off in your body in any one minute. And 
it's some crazy big number. I don't know exactly the number, but it's a crazy big number of um, processes, chemical reactions happening, um, electrical pulses firing to animate your body, to beat your heart, to pump the blood around your... Look, it's just unbelievable. And there is this orchestration of all of it so that it all is working perfectly. Um, the infinite orchestrating power of the universe when we just allow it. And, and health is about the same thing. You know, stress pinches off that energy that nurtures your body and letting go and chillaxing and just handing it over and relaxing and knowing all is well and trusting and all those words we've used, trust, know, enjoy your life, relax, that allows this infinite orchestrating power to work in our lives and allows the angels to bring us what we want. And uh, it's a miraculous thing, really. It's, we just have to learn to chill out, relax, trust. Same with your guidance. When I'm teaching people how to contact their guidance, it's that it's in those moments of complete relaxation. Sometimes you're driving the car. I'm pretty relaxed when I drive the car, watching television, washing the dishes, having a shower that you get these images, these flashes, these messages, <clears throat> and it's in the really relaxed times. And then you've got to trust that what you're receiving is what you've asked for. If you're asking for a message from your guardian angel or a message from your guide or a message from your dead relative or dead, dead loved one, I don't even like to call them dead. They always chastise me when I call them dead. <laughs> they say we're more alive than you, <laughs> no, than most of you. <laughs> and uh, from your departed, not even the guy, from your loved ones on the other side, oh, we've got to come up with different language, haven't we? From your post-physical loved ones. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So if you want messages, you just got to trust, relax, chill out. The more relaxed, the happier you can be. The more joyous you can be, the more relaxed you can be. The more you allow that process to work, the angels to do their job. Ask and then let it go. Ask and then trust that your answers... You know, the analogy that I often say when I'm teaching is it's like a being at a restaurant or a cafe. You go, there's a menu, you pick from the menu, you choose your preference, you choose what you want and you give your order to the kitchen through the waitress or waiter and then your order is given to the kitchen and they're cooking up your meal and now you enjoy your time either with yourself, people who are by themselves or on their iPhones or talking to the people that you're sitting at the cafe with, you just enjoy the time as your meal is getting cooked and it's being brought to you. And it's a bit like life. It's um, ask, give your order to the kitchen, let the infinite orchestrating power of the cosmos and the angels cook it up for you and enjoy the time until it's served. <laughs> the creative process. It's beautiful. It's actually a bit, a bit more complicated than that, but we don't need to get all up in the mechanics of it unless you want to. It's all about alignment of timelines and frequencies. Uh, but it's a beautiful thing. It's happening to all of us all the time and being aware of it and deliberate with it is where, where it's at. And definitely asking for the help that you think you need and um, being responsible for showing up. Hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed talking to Robbie. She's a she's a hoot. She's an absolute hoot. Uh, I I put her on to a friend of mine who's um, living in the states. She's an Amer she's an Australian actress or director actually, and um, comedian star. And her boyfriend is an actor, and they're now living in Hollywood. And uh, she wanted to uh, turn Robbie's book Aboriginal Healing, which one, The Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, or one of the books into a movie and I just asked Robbie how that is going but she said she didn't hear anything back it was a couple of years ago now so but we were saying that we both thought that what the book's secrets of Aboriginal healing and Aboriginal secrets of awakening one of them or both of them will be made into a movie one day It'd be great It'd be wonderful we should have more movies like that instead of the drama that we get on Netflix more healing movies are more miraculous healing movies. I love those movies like um, The Green Mile. Remember that movie of that big, did you watch it? That big guy, big black guy, beautiful, gentle soul that was arrested for the murder of two children. He didn't do it. He found them. Somebody had murdered them and he found them. And then they, it was set in the 
late 1800s or early early 19th or 20th century anyway tom hanks is in it and anyway he's in he's in jail waiting to be um executed the green mile is the the what they call the walk from the jail cell to the execution and he's a healer and he's sort of he's intellectually challenged but he's just this amazing healer oh i loved that movie oh, i could watch it over and over again and him doing all this healing and people having these miraculous healings oh i just loved that movie <laughs> i'm gonna cry just i love movies like that <laughs> there just needs to be more of them <laughs> make your healing movies the world needs to understand that healing is available not through just drugs and but healing is available when you ask and let it happen there's a scene where they take him out of the jail to i think it's the warden's wife is dying of cancer and um and he does this healing on her oh amazing anyway healing is available to all of us all the time we just have to trust and relax ask and know that our prayers are answered love you all and thanks again for watching who's coming up next week i don't know i'm all emotional <laughs> oh, i'll see you next week actually i think someone cancelled next week i was going to have a week off but then i did get a message from sue uh, who i had um, reached out to a while ago and i might slot her in it's be more of a galactic conversation mm, we'll see anything can happen just got to go with the flow stay in the moment and let the orchestrating power just sort it all out that's what i do people cancel i go okay i'll have a week off and then somebody else slots in no oh, that's nice too it all just sorts itself out so big love to you and love you all